The Sunday School lesson for May 7th, 2023 is The Birth of the Church, Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 8, verses 14 through 24, and verses 37 through 39. To my subscribers and viewers, welcome back to my channel, The Backstory. If you are new here, the agenda is as follows. I will share the backstory, read the lesson text, offer a brief lesson summary. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Thank you so much for your support. The backstory to this lesson is taken from Acts chapter 1, verses 12 through 26. Let's begin. A little bit about Luke the man. Luke was a physician a companion of Paul, and he was the only Gentile to author Bible books. He addresses Theophilus in Luke and Acts, and of course, he wrote both books, Luke and Acts. After Jesus' ascension, the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. The narrative continues. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers, a group numbering about 120, and said, Brothers and sisters, the scripture had to be fulfilled in which the Holy Spirit spoke long ago through David concerning Judas who served as guide for those who arrested Jesus. He was one of our number and shared in our ministry. With the payment he received for his wickedness, Judas bought a field. There he fell headlong, his body burst open, and all his intestines spilled out. Everyone in Jerusalem heard about this, so they called that field in their language, a keldama, that is, field of blood. Acts 1 and 20 states from the book of Psalms, or, said Peter, it is written in the book of Psalms, may his place be deserted, let there be no one to dwell in it, and may another take his place of leadership. Choosing an apostle. Therefore, it is necessary to choose one of the men who have been with us the whole time the Lord Jesus was living among us, beginning from John's baptism to the time when Jesus was taken up from us. For one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. So they nominated two men, Joseph called Barsabbas, also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which of these two you have chosen to take over this apostolic ministry, which Judas left to go where he belongs. Casting of lots. So they cast lots and the lot fell to Matthias, so he was added to the 11 apostles. The backstory ends here, and the Sunday school lesson begins with the next slide. Golden text, key verse. The promise is for you and your children, and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. Acts chapter 2, verse 39. Verse 1. When the day of Pentecost came, 
they were all together in one place. Verse 2, suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. Verse 3, they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. Verse 4, all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Verse 5, now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. Verse 6, when they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Verse 7, utterly amazed, they ask, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Verse 8, then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Verse 14, then, Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews, and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. Verse 16. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. Verse 17, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Verse 18, even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. Verse 19, I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. Verse 20, the sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. Verse 21, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Verse 22, fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles wonders and signs which God did among you through him as you yourselves know. Verse 23, this man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge and you with the help of wicked men put him to death by nailing him to the cross. Verse 24, but God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. Verse 37, when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, brothers, what shall we do? Verse 38, Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Verse 39, The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. A brief summary. 
Pentecost was one of the three festivals of the Jewish nation during which people were expected to celebrate in Jerusalem. It is significant for a number of reasons. One, the name indicates that it occurred 50 days after Passover, meaning it always occurred on the first day of the week, Sunday, rather than the Sabbath, Saturday. Two, since less than two months separated two significant festivals, Passover and Pentecost, many would remain in Jerusalem during that time. Those present at Passover were the same people present at Pentecost. Three, one of the purposes of the day was to celebrate the barley harvest. Harvest is regularly used in scripture as symbolizing people becoming mature and submitting to God. Four, Pentecost had traditionally come to represent the giving of the law on Mount Sinai. This made it the birthday of the Jewish nation, the nation led by the law of God. So 50 days after the Lamb of God was slain, the witnesses to that event would see a new harvest, a new nation that would be led by the Spirit of God rather than the law of God. Wind represents the Spirit of God. Fire represents His judgment. This manifestation of the Holy Spirit not only came with narration, but Jews from every nation under heaven each heard these words in their own language. The crowd's reaction is what one would expect. Some were overcome with awe and filled with questions. Others tried to mask their fear through mockery. In response to both, Peter addressed the crowd with a sermon that would be the model for others we find in this book. The typical apostolic sermon consisted of four parts. First, an inexplicable miracle was explained, usually with a reference to an Old Testament prophecy. Second, the apostle would summarize the ministry of Jesus. Third, the apostles would back their assertion with a source already considered authoritative by their audience, and that source was usually the Old Testament. Finally, these sermons would end with a call for repentance. On the day of Pentecost, the affirmation that those present were responsible for the crucifixion of Christ was especially convincing. No doubt, many who heard Peter's sermon were among those who, just weeks before, shouted with the crowds demanding Jesus' crucifixion and the release of a murderer. Thank you so much for watching. Join me soon for the next backstory. Stay safe and may God bless.